right uh, their their friends their students uh, uh, we would like to have a, a discussion on on equilibrium forces and we will take on this topic by virtue of uh, an example itself uh, and work out uh, work out the, the various forces acting on a body and make down some calculations based on based on the, the vectors involved in this problem now if I if I suppose that there there is there is some mass m hanged on this inextensible string and let me assume that uh, this is this is the wall on which this string is fixed and this is also the wall on which this string is fixed now if I assume that this angle is uh, say for example 30 degree and obviously this string will have some tension on it suppose that tension is T1 and uh, this will also have a tension in this direction suppose that tension is T2 now what I assume is that this whole system is in equilibrium now if this system is in equilibrium uh, what are the numerical values of the tension that has been exerted on this string and the tension that has been exerted on this string so the pro problem is quite simple the simple things make you realize how to do the complicated things keep this thing always in mind so simple things with good concepts the concept makes the difference now the point is that in this this whole system is in equilibrium and what am I supposed to find in this problem is I'm supposed to find the value of T1 and T2 how much tension is is there in this inextensible string and how much tension is there in this inextensible string so for that uh, uh, the, the best way is that we should resolve these vectors this tension that's there in the given problem it's a vector quantity and a vector can be resolved so you can see that this tension T1 can be resolved like this so if this is 30 this is also 30 so this one will be T1 sine theta and this component of T1 will be T1 cos theta now let me assume that in the given problem the mass of this body is 10 kilograms and uh, acceleration due to gravity is equal to 10 meter per second square so so the things are quite clear in this problem that that you have taken you have resolved the vector t1 into two components one is in the vertical direction and another one is in the horizontal direction and since we are assuming that the system is in equilibrium that is the net force acting on this point say for the sake of argument is equal to zero so uh, so the things are quite simple now you can see that this vertical component of T1 this vertical component of T1 uh, that is what that is T1 cos theta it is balanced by the gravitational force acting on this body so that must be mg so this will be the first equation that we can write write down for this problem the other equation must be this horizontal component you can check it out horizontal component 
Now what in this case? This vector is balanced by that vector. So I will say P1 sine theta must be equal to P2. I think I have done it. The components I have written uh, in the wrong way. This is T1 cos theta, sorry. And this should be P1 sine theta. So here I should be writing down T1 sine theta and here I should be writing down P1 cos theta. Okay, now I think the problem is solved. We can calculate T1 as well as T2. Now you can see in this equation itself you can see P1 sine theta will be sine 30. And this is equal to m is 10 into g is to be taken as 10. So t1 must be equal to, uh, it is sine 30 is 1 by 2. So this is 100. So t1 immediately comes out to be 200 Newton. So this is the value of t1 that has been calculated. Similarly, if we can calculate the value of t2 from this equation, because we already know what is T1. So what will be T2? T2 will be T1. Come on. How much is T1? Is 200. Okay. Cos theta. That means cos 30. So T2 must be equal to 200 times. This cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So this is two ones are two ones are two zeros are two zeros are. So I think root three is uh, equal to one point seven three. So t two must be equal to one point seven three into hundred newtons. So t two must be one hundred and seventy three newton. So you see by resolving the vectors. By resolving the vectors uh, based on the given problem, we could calculate the two unknowns in the given problem. And with the basic assumption that the equilibrium force, that the net force acting on this system is, uh, is zero. I mean, say this whole system is in equilibrium. When this is the case, what we did, we resolved the vectors and we, we wrote down the, the vectors along y-axis. We wrote down the vectors on x-axis, equated these vectors and, uh, and solved those equations and found the value of tension P1 and the value of tension P2. The same idea can be used to, to solve thousands of the problems. The point is that, that how you are exploring your mind to solve the problems. So, so, so it's not like that you will choose 10,000 problems and we will solve them all. The point is the concept should be clear so that if any problem has been uh, uh, included at any po uh, moment of time, you must be in a situation to handle and solve that problem.